Hi everybody, welcome to our spring edition of our live members um, class that we're going to do here right now. And I wanted to have you guys type any questions and I want to know, first of all, where are you from? Where are you guys watching from? And what are you doing today? It's Friday and it's, what is it, the 1st of March, 2nd of March? I can't remember, sometime in March. <laughs> Emily is sitting right over here and she's reading off your questions that you'll have. So, and also she's gonna shout out where you're from. So go ahead and yeah, so type Abby, those in. Abby and Elaine are saying hi already. Hello, Abby and Elaine. Shirley's here. And Shirley, yes, we, we wanna give a few minutes for some people to join us. So this is a perfect time to chat and ask some questions that may not relate to this class. So go for it. And it's worth letting everybody know that they will be sent a link to this afterwards. So okay. if they're not making along now, they can do so at their own time. Yes. Yeah, so Emily just said, just in case you can't hear her, um, that we'll have a link posted so you can always come back to this and review it and watch it and make along with me as well. So, yes. We have uh, Shirley from Plainfield. We have the Cotswold Crafter from New Zealand. Can everybody hear what she's saying? Thumbs yes. up. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, Judy is from New Zealand. Washington. Hello, Elaine Washington. Elaine is from New Mexico. Nice. <laughs> Lindsay Zogas says hi. Hello, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? So today I am going to start making a project that is one of my favorite projects. And I like it because it's a little, it's a way to bring a little bit of spring back into my home decor after the cold. It's been snowing here, it's been raining here. We had snow a couple times last week, it was sleeting. So I wanna remember spring. And the way I like to do that is bring some spring buds back into my home. So one of the things that I love to do throughout the winter is go around, <laughs> say hello Enzo. <laughs> Anyway, so I like to go around and pick up branches that have fallen off of the trees during the winter time and I'll bring them inside and dry them. We often will have big huge branches that have fallen after a snowstorm. Here in Portland that happens sometimes. And I'll save these and I'll use them throughout the year. So anything else you want to call out? Any new viewers? No, we, we've got a fair few people here now, okay, so I think awesome. we can probably crack on okay. and let everybody know that we're here for questions um, throughout the webinar, so they just need to comment um, and I'll get that question to you. Okay, that sounds perfect. So anytime you have a question, Emily will just raise her hand and I'll um, have her state that question. So anyway, this is, this is what I like to do. And you might want to, if you're picking up branches off the you know, out of the park or out of your backyard, you might want to let them dry a little bit. Um, if you think that there might be any sort of little critters, you know, inside the branches, freeze them. That's a really great way to make sure there's nothing uh, living inside of your branch if you don't want, you know, little things crawling around. So you can freeze them, let them dry. You want them dry because it will uh, preserve better. So. I've already started this branch for you guys, and I think we, we sent you guys this link, and this is our paper apple blossom buds and leaves, and we've cut all of ours on our Cricut machine. If you don't have a Cricut or a personal cutting machine, you can go ahead and cut them out by hand. Now, note that some of these little teeny tiny, I call them eyelashes, they're so tiny. You probably don't want to cut those out by hand, but do the best you can, and just get in there with your teeny tiny scissors and make them small. You don't have to have these big spaces. You can just actually use a set of pinking shears to edge them so that they're not completely flat. And then just get in there and you know give it some nice fringe, some little tiny fringe like this. So that's kind of an alternative method that I use. So the papers that I'm using today are our frosted papers, because you know that's my favorite, right? So our frosted, except for crepe paper. But today we're not doing crepe paper. Today is frosted paper. So I am using ice silver. You can use any of the whites that are offered. This is all from paperpapers.com. And they sell in packs of uh, 50. You can also find some in packs of 25 and maybe a different color. Here is the Fairway, which is a pack of 25. And then Botanic and gold and these papers even if you have to buy the large packs they're so worth it if you guys follow along with some of our other projects you will know you will use these because i use them a lot so i have pre-cut 
and the instructions will tell you exactly what to cut out of what color. I've cut all of the paper flower petals from the white and then the gold is the center and then I did half leaves in the botanic and half in the fairway. So you can kind of see this. And the leaves, there's two different sizes. There's a medium and a large and you'll want those because you want that variety. And then we also, one of the other patterns that you'll cut is this little funny looking flower. And this is actually what we will create the bud from. So there you go. All right, so once you have all of your flowers and buds and leaves cut out in centers, they look something like, I'll pull them all together here. Let's see, two different sizes, two different colors, but I don't have all the colors. We've already kind of prepped a lot of this for you guys. All right, so there's all my pieces. And then the next step that I'm going to work on, and let me pull this back over because I don't want to mess up my mat is this new thing that we've been doing a lot of, which is pan pastels. So, okay, I'm gonna show you guys a sneak peek. Nobody has seen this yet, this is the first time. We actually have our own set of pan pastels coming. <laughs> so this is all the colors that we use the most when we're doing paper flower crafting. And I'm gonna show you how to use it today on a frosted paper because we use it a lot on crepe paper. It works on frosted paper too. There's a trick to it, so let's see how we do it. So I have my little buds here and I have my flower. And I like to use a brush. You can also use the pan pastel sponge. Both are great. For this case, I like to use the brush and I'm just gonna tab it in. This one is the pearlescent red. And a, you know, pearl on pearl, of course. And we just wanna kind of put it in the center and give it a bit of a blend. Pan pastels, they are kind of a loose, they're, they're a dry pastel, so there's no oil in them. So they're not going to, you know, stick like a crayon or an oil stick. They're quite powdery. So they can be a little bit messy. You wanna blow that off. And I'm just blending it outwards to get a really nice look. You can see that. I'm gonna turn it over and do the backside as well just because some of the powder fell through. So I'm going to blend that up a bit. All right. So, this is powder on a coated paper, and if you run your finger across it, it'll probably remove itself. So what I have here is a matte finish. It's funny because a lot of people ask me if I ever spray my flowers to preserve them, and the answer has always been no. <laughs> Until now, because I wanna preserve this color. I would do this outside. I'm not gonna go outside right now. We're just gonna do it here, and you just very gently and lightly spray that and then let that dry. And then you have a beautiful ombre. I love this trick. So uh, the same thing on this. Now instead of the center, because this is the bud, I'm actually gonna do the tips. Just a little tiny bit on the tips. So if you guys have not tried Pan Pastel yet, I highly recommend it. Just go, you can go to the store and just get one to try it. And maybe it's the pearlescent red because you want to do this project and try it out and see what you think. Um, they do have their sponges that go along with it that you can purchase or just get an inexpensive uh, paintbrush from the art supply store. I know they sell all the pen pastels at, at Blick or Blick.com if you don't have a Blick store in your neighborhood. Okay, just spray this really lightly and then let it dry. So I'm gonna do a few more of these little centers because we wanna add them. I'm sorry, buds, I call them centers, they're buds. I'm gonna add those to my branch. So one of the things that I like to do, I've been making a lot of paper flowers in the last few months because of the book and other things we're doing. And one of my favorite things to do at night is take my pile of materials home out of the office we're sitting here in the studio right now and i listen to books so i've been listening to a lot of books so if you guys have any recommendations of great books for me to listen to send them to emily and she'll she'll give me that list because i need a new book i just finished um all the light you cannot see i just finished that one the other day and that was a good one the console is crafted 
Peter is asking if you could just repeat the name of the store where you can buy the pastels. Yes. So locally, we know I, they have pen pastels a lot of places. So this is where we buy it locally is Blick. Now Blick has, I think there are um, maybe 140 stores throughout the US. They also have Blick.com and it's B-L-I-C-K is how you spell it. Um, however, if you go to Pan Pastel, I think they have a list of all their stockists. So you can find out where else you can buy this. And then Emily will pop into the comments as well what color I use, which is, I'll tell you, Again, Emily, it is pearlescent red, and it's this beautiful coral color. If you can see that, yeah. Just don't breathe while you're doing this inside. Okay. All right, those are. I'm going to let those dry. So in the meantime, my leaves. And I think if any of you follow any of my frosted paper flower uh, projects, you know how much I love to shape things, right? So the first thing I'll do on my leaves, there aren't any scores on this, which is easy to fold because it's just a straight fold. I'll just fold it in half. And then I have my new handy dandy curling tool. This is my Fiskars tool that we just released. I think it will be on doan.com here pretty soon and then we'll be selling in our store as well in the meantime you can use your edge of your scissors just like i've done for years and years but this is actually a really nice tool so fold it in half and then i'll just gently kind of give it a nice curl and i'll give most of the curl right here on the edge and then feather it out and blend it out to the tip and i just love to do this because a flat leaf doesn't have quite the look as this shaped leaf. Yes? Shirley would like to know what the spray is that you use to fix the pastel. Let's turn that around. This is a Krylon and it's matte finish. Again, we picked this up at Blick. I'm pretty sure Joanne or Michaels would have this as well, or any, any place that has a pretty good craft or art supply would have this. And Emily will put that into the list as well. So you can see here, if you want to get close up, Matthew. Um, Matthew is our filming today. Um, see how the frosted paper really brings out that pearlescent look, and it gives a variation of the color. It almost, you know, makes it look like two or three colors. And this is this is why I love frosted paper so much, because you can't get that with a flat paper. So I'll, I'll do this again with another leaf, just to show you again. So fold it in half. I'll start in the middle and make a nice curl. Don't get too close on my nails. I haven't had a manicure for a while. <laughs> We've been really busy. So making new things for you guys. All right, so that's how I make my curled leaves. And I have a nice little pile going on over here. So then the next thing we'll do is make the flower. This is dried really nicely. You can see my fingers running across and nothing is coming up. So my new, one of my new favorite materials right here. There we go, I can see it. All right, we'll pull this curling tool back again and I'm going to curl it the other direction. So here, my finger is on the color, I'll turn it over and then I'll curl it this direction. And just very gently, you know, it takes a little bit of time to learn how to curl paper like this. I often have paper petals that rip off if I'm a little too vigorous, but just be gentle. And if something does, you know, come off or rip off, just glue it back together. It's easy. So do it around a couple times and then we have this beautiful little shape. And again, you can see how the pearlescent paper just makes it look so good. All right, our third step is to take this little tiny eyelash. And isn't this why we love our cutting machines? Take the little tiny eyelash and I'm gonna roll it with my fingers. I guess it's more than one eyelash, it's a strip of eyelashes. And I'm rolling it as much as, in a circle as I possibly can. Uh, one question we have, can, could you use fringing scissors to make those eyelashes instead? You can, we, we actually have some new fringing scissors on them, well, with Fiskars. And I could show them to you if we, if, if we want to stop for a second and go grab them. They don't 
fringe as small as I like for this. They fringe great for things that, you know, if you're making tassels or party favors or flowers that have a bigger um, center, I think that that works great. So if I didn't, I'm talking through this, so let me explain what I just did and then I'll get back to that question. So I went ahead and rolled them and then I put a nice dot of glue on the end of it and just placed it right inside of my flower. And then with my fingers, I'll just sort of fluff it out like this. So in a case like this, if you're not cutting it with your cutting machine, let me just show you. These are, I will tell you, my all time new favorite scissors. And they are the, um, I don't, what are they called exactly? This is a precision cut or something like that. So this is actually the Leah Griffith brand, but Fiskars does have them and they're just not teal. <laughs> but they do have the scissor. And if you can get your hands on a pair, I would because they are by far, and also the black tips mean that it's a non-stick tip. Um, so if, yes. But they will be in Joanne's end of this month online. Yes, these, these will be online soon. Um, <laughs> I wish I could send you all a pair right now. Uh, all right, so I've just cut a piece of paper just to show you. If I were cutting this without a cutting machine, I would probably use my pinking shears first. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fake that, just kind of pretend. A few notches here. The reason why I like pinking shears, you know, for the end of my stamen like this is I just don't like the blunt cut. So giving it a shape, you can even use any of your, your edge trimmers that have maybe a scallop. So you can see how that just cuts off that blunt shape. Then these little tiny scissors, you can get in there and make the finest cuts. You can almost make eyelashes with these scissors because the points are so delicate and they're very, very sharp. I'm going to show you how, how this looks. I mean, that's pretty detailed there. So I would do that over a fringe scissor for this particular flower because you want, they're such tiny flowers, you want it to be delicate. So this would be my second choice over cutting it on the cutting machine. And I cut this out of cardstock too. If you actually, if you cut it out of the frosted paper, it would be even a little bit more delicate and light. Okay, so we have, we have the flower done. I am going to show you now how to make the bud. Oh, okay, the French scissors. Thank you, somebody brought these. So these are our new French scissors from Fiskars. And I didn't really mean this to be a product show on tell, but oh well, I'll show you guys anyway. Um, they're actually relatively fine and they're really good quality. They were careful, you know, when we were going through our product development to make sure that these were scissors that were the Fiskars standard of high quality. So let me show you the difference of why. Actually, I'll, I'll make some smaller ones just so you can see a similar. Again, I would use these for parties, for fringes, for, you know, flowers that needed a, a bigger center. So let's see here. So here is the rougher fringe versus the little teeny tiny one. Not bad. I mean, this is actually pretty good. So that, that is what I would recommend for this case. All right. So then we're going to do this little bud. In this case, we want the pink to be on the outside. So I'm placing the pink face up and then curling each one of these little petals downward. The two long ones, I'll take those and glue them together. They're almost tabs. That's why I have the, the two longer ones because I need a base to hold the other petals. And then very carefully add just a tiny bit of glue onto the back of the other four and then place them on top and I'm putting the tiniest bit of glue. Now I am using a low temperature hot glue gun. That's what I always, always, always recommend. I don't like to burn my fingers and low temperature seems to work just fine. So I just have this, I think, what brand is this? This is a Surebonder low temperature. I think we pay like five bucks for them and I use them until they start getting too hot and then pull out another one. Unfortunately, I wish they weren't quite so disposable. We're working on that as well, but that's coming down the line. All right, so there's our little bud. 
So what I like to do when I'm when I'm working on uh, a project like this is I'll just sit and first I'll cut everything and then I'll paint everything and then I'll curl everything. So I kind of work in process. So I would make all of these buds at once. I don't want to sit here and do this, so I'm going to keep going and we'll show you what to do. So I've already started this branch and I will finish it in a bit, but I'm going to use a blank branch to show you my process. I'll start with the leaves and grab just a handful so I can have both the large in both colors and then the small in both colors. And I'll start with the large leaves, put some glue on the back, and I glue them straight onto the wood. And I, I kind of follow the little nubules and the branch ends to make my placement. And when I work on gluing the leaves onto this branch, I'll shape them to go the direction of the branch so it looks natural. If I placed a leaf, you know, not to say nature wouldn't do this, but if I place a leaf that direction, it doesn't look quite as nice as if I place it this direction. So you can see just the movement of my leaves will just kind of follow the movement of the branch. That makes sense. And then sometimes I'll, I'll take a leaf and I'll place it on the other side so it looks like this and you can even shape it a bit more by not making it flat you know so it's a little bit of a U shape can you see that and you know as many leaves as you fill just you kind of want to go with your gut um, if you want a very full green leaf branch you add a lot if you just want a few then add that many this is where you can have fun and get creative. I'll tend to save some of my smaller leaves for the tops rather than a big leaf at the top. Maybe one more here and then we'll start adding flowers. So I would say that when I'm making these branches, I will either have a leaf or a flower on each tip and sometimes both. So I'll start with my buds so I'll, I know exactly where I wanna place those. I'll put a dot of glue on the very back and then I'll place it right like that. I thought I had more than one bud, but I guess I don't. So I just have one bud for this branch. I would, I would say three to five buds on a little branch like this would be perfect. Then I'll start placing my blooms. I'll kind of hold the petals in, put some glue on the back. And you'll see I'm placing it kind of at a joint. Um, I'll place some of the buds right behind some of the leaves. One of, one of the things I love to do when I'm out walking in nature, you know, going on my little walks, is I will sit and examine what these things look like in nature. I'm always very curious. <laughs> Let's see. So there's a little joint or a little um, bump right there, so I placed a flower there. And then you can just keep going like that until you're done. So I'll finish these a little bit later, but you can kind of get an idea. I think, you know, doing, you can do one big branch or you can do several small ones and then place them in a vase. And it just looks so pretty. That could be a centerpiece. You can put it on your entryway, um, on your desk at work. It's just a nice way to bring in spring and you won't have petals sitting on your table one morning when you get to work. Another thing that you can do with these same paper flowers is add them to a wreath. And I love these grapevine wreaths because they're pre-done, they're ready to go, and it's so simple. You could have a wreath made in probably a few hours, and there's your spring entry at, on your front door. So the same technique, I just glued them straight on. And you know, a lot of times when I do wreaths, I'll keep the leaves going in one direction. I think in this case, I would scatter them. I would go all different directions because it's a, a light, playful look. 
Um, I don't think I would make them go, but that could look pretty too, it's up to you. So that is how I do all of my blooming branches. And if you guys have any questions, now's the time. Yeah, so. I have a couple here. Um, would this pattern work with crepe paper? So actually no, but we do have a crepe paper version of it. The reason why, and thank you for asking, when you're cutting crepe paper, the grain of the crepe paper is really important. Um, it will really determine how your flower will fall or shape. So you can't cut a shape like this from crepe paper if your grain is one direction. All your petals would have grain going different direction. We do have some crepe paper patterns, and this may not be exactly what they look like, but it would look similar to this. And you would just cut five of these to create your one bloom. So go online, we do have crepe paper patterns for this exact look. Um, in fact, I think there's one right back here. Oh, let me go grab it. <laughs> I'm gonna stand up for a minute. <laughs> All right. So here, here is a crepe paper version. Now this one I didn't do pen pastel on, but it would be easy, easy to do. You could just add some of that color. I think you know, they all vary, all these blooms vary. You can do an apple blossom, um, a plum blossom, uh, cherry blossoms. They all have a little bit different color formation and sometimes they have different petal counts, but you could use the same patterns and make whichever you'd like. So this is a very, very simple uh, crepe paper version. This is a fringed center. Um, yeah, so you can see how each of the petals, get in close Matthew so you can see this. So each petal, you can see how the grain moves in the direction of the petal, and that would be the difference. Uh, Elaine Sinton has asked, can your SVG files be opened in design space on the iPad? So yes, they can, but the thing is you'll want to download them first on a computer. So once they're in your design space, you can, you can download them on a computer, anyone's computer, and put them in your design space and save them and they'll be there for you. Yep. Uh, and finally, On your iPad. <laughs> yes. Finally, can you go through the tools that you use? Yes. Okay, so, you know, I have just regular tools that I always keep handy. Now, we didn't hand cut anything today, but I always keep them by me. So just regular tools, my little tiny um, precision cut scissors, my low temperature hot glue gun is a must, always have that. And then I used my new curling tool. However, let me show you how you can use the scissors for the same thing. This is what I used for years and years. I would either open my scissors up like this, and I'll just use this, and then just curl like that. And when Fiskars saw me doing this with, the, with their scissors, they said, wait, let's make you a tool for that so you're not, not using your scissors. Or you can even keep them closed if you don't want quite the sharp edge and do that as well. So that works. Um, let's see, I think that's all my, oh, we have the paintbrush as a tool. But as far as materials go, I have my pearlescent red pan pastel. And the paper I used. This is all from Paper Papers. This is Gold Shine from Shine. Uh, this is Botanic from Curious. Fairway from Star Dream. And Ice Silver from Curious. So those are the four colors. You can vary that if you want to. These are definitely my two favorite greens. So it, they're a good investment. If you get them and you only use a few sheets for this project, you will use this for other projects as well. And then we also used the Krylon Matte Finish Spray to keep the pan pastels in place. And our SVG cuts, you can use them on a Cricut, you can use them on a Silhouette, any machine that takes SVG files, you can upload them. So they're not specific to any brand, you can use them on all of them. Or you can also print this lovely pattern that I've chopped up and you can print this and use it as a pattern over and over again, or you can even print. Well, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, just use it as a pattern. So. Great. All um, right. I think we just need to um, 
ask our members what they'd like to see next. Yes, exactly. So this is our spring. I wanted to share with you guys something really simple, something you could make in one afternoon or even a couple hours to decorate your house or give us a gift. It's always a nice thing to have those quick craft moments. Um, so last time we did crepe paper flowers, this time we did our frosted paper flowers and we want to know what would you like to see next? We're going to do an early summer. I believe our we're scheduled for June. Mm -hmm. May is a very busy month for us. I mean, <laughs> our book comes out. We, yeah, so May is a busy month. So June, we'll, we'll have a great opportunity to share some of that with you guys and do another class. So please let us know what you want to teach, want us to teach and what you want to know about and how I can be assistance to you guys on making your craft life easier and making things really accessible for you. So anything else? All right. Thanks you guys. And make sure and leave your comments. We'll go back and check them out again and make sure we can answer everything. If we haven't answered it here in the video, go ahead and put it in the underneath the video and we'll come back and answer them all. Okay. And we'll see you next time and happy crafting.